Hi hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to discuss about the media resources as I was getting so many emails and the comments as well to make some videos on the media resource section. So today I am going to discuss about the media resources in detail. So let's start it. Okay. So let's discuss about this thing. What is media resources and what are the types of media resources? There are like uh, five or six types of media resources and those are hardware and the software media resources. So let's discuss about this one by one. So media resources are software based and hardware based entity that performs media processing functions. So what are the media resources? Media resource, either it could be a software based or it could be a hardware based who can perform the media processing media processing we can say anything related to the media whether they can uh, transcode as well they can uh, play the music as well <clears throat> it can do it can do anything so software media software based media resources will get activated as soon as you activate this ip voice media streaming service on your cuc on your publisher or on the subscribers so this software based media resources are provided by this IP voice media streaming service and the communication on these media resources is via SCCP only it won't like it will not work on like SIP, MDCP or any other any other thing the communication through, through the media resources is via SCCP only so once you activate the service that IP voice media streaming service your uh, Once you activate the voice media streaming service, your software based media resources will get activated and it will show up on your CUCM. So as soon as you activate it, it will get registered on the CUCM so that you can use it. You can use your software based media resources. And now if you want to use the uh, hardware based media resources as well, then you need to add the DSP card like the PVDM, PVDM cards on your uh, gateway. So this DSP cards, DSP cards provide both software and hardware based resources. So you can use those DSP cards for the hardware as well as software based. And the number of calls on that DSP depends on the complexity of the codec and the complexity mode which you configure on the DSP. So we have mainly three types of complexity modes, medium complexity, high complexity and the flexible complexity mode. So what's the main difference between this uh, modes, medium and high complexity mode and the flexible mode? So in the medium and high complexity mode, we can say a resource with configured complexity equal or higher than the actual complexity of the call must be available or the call will fail. For example, if, if your call requires a high complexity codec, but your DSP resource is configured for the medium complexity, just say. So your call will fail. So resource should be equal or higher. So if your call needs a, a high complexity codec, but your uh, this gateway is configured for a medium complexity mode, your call will fail. And in the other case, like if, if the medium complexity call is attempted, on a DSP configured that is configured for high complexity mode, your call will succeed because that is configured for equal or greater than that. If your call is medium complexity mode and your gateway, which is your DSP resource is configured for medium or high complexity codec, the call will succeed. In that case, your Cisco IOS will allocate high complexity mode resource. Okay, and the flexible mode, DSP in flex mode accepts a call of any supported codec type as long as it has available processing power. So if it has available processing power, it will accept the calls. And compared to medium or high complexity mode, flexible mode has the advantage of supporting G711 calls per DSP. For example, a PVDM216 DSP can support eight G711 calls in medium complexity, but if you are using the same PVDM2 for the flexible mode, it will support 
16 G711 calls in that particular flexible mode. So these are the two medium complexity and the high complexity codecs. So we can say G711 A low, G711 mu low, G726, all versions G729A, A, B, and extra B, and extra A, everything. These are the medium complexity codecs. And we have G728, G723, G729, G729B. These are under high complexity modes. So that is mainly related with the medium complexity, high complexity, and the flexible mode complexity. So now the next we will discuss about the media resources, how many types of media resources we have and all other things, whether those are hardware based or a software based. So let's discuss about this one by one. So as you can see, we have like five media resources that is written here. The first one is I can say annunciator. Then we have media termination point. Then we have transcorder. Then we have conference bridge and the music on hold as well. So what's the main, what's the main work for enunciator that is enunciation as you can see. So the main work for enunciator, it's, it's just a definitions and it's not a, like a detailed version. We will discuss about the detailed version as well. So let's discuss in detail one by one. So this streaming audio, as it is written here, streaming audio that will be given by the enunciation. It means enunciator work is to stream the audio. Passing the stream from one connection to the another, that is the MTP, MTP, I can say work of MTP. It can pass the stream from one connection to the another. Then we have that is transcoder, transcoding. It converts the data stream from one compression type to another. Like if you want to convert it from any other different coder, like if your first party, uh, like this one, this is your phone A and this is your phone B and this year first phone is using G711 codec and this is using G722 codec. So if this phone A will make a call to this phone B, but both are working on a different codec. G7, this phone, phone A works on G711 and this phone B works on G722 codec. So as soon as this phone A makes a call, it needs a transcoder to convert this out, convert this stream to the another stream that is G722. So when, so once this phone A makes a call and it reaches out to your COCM or we can say the gateway, like if you need a transcoder, then it will go to like, this is uh, your gateway. Then your gateway, uh, like if you configure anything, uh, if you configure your transcoders on the gateway and you add it, uh, all this transcoder on your CUCM as well. We will, we will uh, check everything. I will show you everything on your CUCM as well as on the gateways. So as soon as your phone A will make a call, your CUCM, like this is your CUCM, so your CUCM will invoke the transcoder in between those calls. And at that point of time, your data stream, your like RTP stream will establish between phone A to transcoder and transcoder to phone B. So at this point of time, RTP stream will not be between G711 and G722. It will be between G711 and the transcoder, G722 and the transcoder. Then we have mixing, mixing multiple streams to get one output stream or the different streams as well, that is conferencing. So conferencing means if you are making a call to more than one party, like this is phone A, this is phone B, and this is phone C, and you want to make a conference between these three. So as soon as this person makes a call to this person, like phone A to phone B, like this is your phone A, this is phone B and this is phone C. And your phone B wants to add phone C in conference with the phone A as well. So at this point of time, it will invoke a conference bridge something like this is CFP, conference bridge to make a conference. So at that point of time, your RTP will establish between A to conference bridge, conference bridge to B and conference bridge to C. So in this case, if your phone A and phone B using the same codec, but your phone C is using a different codec, then your conference bridge is able to just convert the stream from one codec to another codec as well. I will show it to you in the configuration on the gateway configuration, we will add the codecs which will 
be supported by the conference bridge or the transcoder. Everything depends on the configuration which you will do on your Git. If a conference bridge is able, like if you have configured G711, G722, G729, G723, G729 AB, like these codecs on your conference bridge, then it will be able to do the transcoding work as well. So in that case, if phone A and phone C are on different codecs, then they don't need a transcoder in between because they already invoked this conference bridge and conference bridge will do the work for transcoder as well. Then we have this thing streaming music to callers on hold that is music on hold part. In this case, what if music on hold will do? As it is written, it is saying streaming music to callers on hold. As soon as phone A or phone B presses the hold button, the other party will hear the music. That depends which music audio resource it is getting. Like, what is is it the fixed audio resource? Is it the uh, like it's it's from the external one or from the internal one? So let's discuss about this media resources in detail. So the first part that is enunciator. So what it will do enunciator, it is automatically added to the data database when you add a CUCM server and it will register with CUCM as soon as you activate the Cisco IP VMS that is Cisco IP voice media streaming application service. And this service, you can activate it on your publishers, on your subscribers, on all other things. If you want to uh, make your subscriber just to use the just to use for the media resources only, then you can just uh, activate this Cisco IP voice media streaming service on that particular server. And you can make that particular server as a music on hold server as well. So what's the next work of Annunciator? It plays pre-recorded announcements and tones to Cisco IP phones. So as soon as like if you are making a call from your phone and if it is not going through, so it will, it will give you an announcement. Uh, like uh, the dial number is not correct or something like this. Like it is written alert callers why the call fails, a dial number that the system cannot recognize. If it did not recognize anything, it will fail the call. And the next part of enunciator is call progress tones, whether it's a busy tone, alerting tone, reorder or a ring back tone and the DTMF tones, everything will be played with the help of enunciator. And then we have that conferencing. If you join a bridge or something like during a conference call, system will play a tone that is barge in tone to announce that whether a participant is joined or that participant has left the bridge. So as well, if you are, like if you are on a conference call and if somebody joins it or if somebody is leaving and you are you are like hearing a tone that is a like somebody joined or left the call that that thing is played by the enunciator and by default your enunciator is configured to support 48 simultaneous streams so your enunciator is supporting 48 my simultaneous stream which is which is like maximum recommended but if your server if your server has only uh, like a limited connectivity like 10 mbps connectivity then you can lower this setting to support 24 simultaneous streams. You don't need to uh, be on the 48 only. You can configure it as per your configuration. Like if you have limited connectivity, then you can reduce it to the 24 simultaneous streams. Let's move to the next part that is our MT, that is media termination point. That is our second media resource. So what's the main use of this MTP that is media termination point? MTP is mainly used to hold the call. So as soon as you press the hold button and your call is on hold at that point of time, then this MTP is holding the call at that point of time. It is a hardware as well as software media resource. And MTP have many uses. That is the first one, like repacketization of stream, DTMF conversion, and about the protocol specific usage. It's like uh, calls over SIP trunks, S323 supplementary services, S323 outbound fast connect. So this MTP is like uh, if this phone, if this is a phone A and this is a phone B, and if B is pressing the call, if the if B is pressing the button to uh, make a call on hold at that point of time, like 
B is pressing the button and it is going on a hold. At that point of time, MTP will take that call. Like if there is any stream coming from A, it should send it to the like an IP address to 0.0.0.0. It should not send it to the B's IP address. So that's why layer MTP is holding that call at that particular point of time. So as soon as B presses the resume button to A, what MTP will do, it will just change this IP address to the B, B's phone's IP address so that it will make a communication between A and B. So the first part in this the like, usages of the MTP, we have this thing that is a repacketization of stream. And what's the main uh, what's the main purpose of this repacketization actually? This MTP can be used to transcode G711 A law audio packets to the G7 mu law packets and vice versa. So your MTP can work as a transcode as transcoder as well. It's not like every transcoding thing, but, but a normal thing that is like, this is also a transcoding if it is converting G711 A low to the G711 mu. So it's like if your phone A is using G711 A low and your phone B is using G711 mu low, then you don't need a transcoder. You can use the MTP as well to make a, uh, like a transcoding between phone A and phone B. So your MTP will work this a uh, little, I can say G711 A low to G711 mu low and vice versa. So we can say CUCM uh, software MTP, that is uh, like th the software MTP can work this. Software MTP can only work for G711 codec. So we can say if you need this conversion, then you can use your G, uh, then you can use your software MTP. But your Cisco iOS MTP can have multiple codecs. If you are configuring uh, it as an hardware, hardware MTP, then you can put like all other codecs but only one codec will be used at any single point of time. So in the in case if, if your software MTP resource is not available, like it is utilizing somewhere and it's not available and you and there is a requirement for that MTP resource, call will connect without using MTP resource, but that call will not have supplementary services. And if your hardware transcoder functionality is required, and transcoder is not available, your call will fail. So you can we can say that transcoder and MTP are kind of same things because if you are using software MTP, then the work is only G711 A low to the G711 mu low and vice versa. And if we talk about the work for transcoder, it can do every, it can like uh, convert any codec like G711, to G722, 2923, AB, A9, AB, everything. Okay. Then we have next thing that is DTMF conversion. So what's the main use of this DTMF? We will discuss about this in detail. So mainly this DTMF tones are used during a call to signal to a far end device. Like this is your phone A, this is your phone B. If you are making a call and if phone this is your phone b this is your phone a and if a is making a call to phone b and there is an announcement on b to press one press two press three to go to this go to this like press one uh, to hear the music press two to hear the video to see the video or like just it's not like a right example <laughs> so i can say the press one to make a call to customer care press two to reach out to any other agent press three to reach out to the incident management like these things so if you are pressing one and there is nothing like dtmf dtmf thing uh configured then you it, it will not recognize whether you will just uh, press as a one two or three or like what you entered. So there are several methods for sending DTMF over IP. That is like DTMF relay between endpoints. There are so many methods, but before that we can say, uh, let's discuss about DTMF conversion related to the MTP as well. So if, if your unified CM, that is your call manager determines 
uh, like if your MTP needs to be inserted, but your MTP resources are not available that that we already discussed your call will fail if MTP allocation fails. But you can like it, it is already set to false by default. This is a by default. It is already set to false, but you can change it in your service parameters. You can change it at any point of time. If you want to change, you can change it. Like if you can, like if you don't want uh, your call to fail, if your MTP allocation fail, then you can just put that uh, defaulting from false to true. It is already set to false. So now, you know, you have, we have these things, DTMF relay between endpoints, that is NTE, that is named telephony events, uh, that is in-band signaling. So all these things are related to the in-band and out-of-band signaling. So first one, that is NTE, uh, in-band signaling. Then we have KPML, key press markup language, that is out-of-band signaling, unsolicited notify, that is also an outbound signaling. S245 signal, S245 alphanumeric, that is also an outbound signaling, out of band actually, this OOB means out of band. Cisco proprietary RTP, that is in band, not supported by CUCM, but supported on Cisco IOS gateways. You have Cisco uh, SCCP skinny client control protocol, that is also an out of band. And then we have DTMF relay between endpoints in the same unified CM cluster, like calls between SIP endpoints and the non-SIP endpoints. We will discuss about this uh, calls between SIP endpoints and the non-SIP endpoints in detail now. So let's discuss one by one about this NTE, uh, NTE events, name telephone events and KPML like these things. So let's discuss. So this RTP NTE, this is uh, just a method of sending DTMF tones from one endpoint to another once your call media has been established and it will work only on in-band. So that is only an in-band signaling. KPML, that is key press markup language. It is like uh, taken from this RFC that is 4730. And like like uh, NTEs, NT will use only in-band signaling. This method of sending DTMF uh, in which this KPML will use the signaling channel that is out of band to send SIP messages, which contains the DTMF digits. So this KPML will use, a, I can say that subscribe message, that SIP subscribe message to register for the DTMF digits. And these digits are delivered in notify messages, which contains an XML encodes. Okay. Then we have this unsolicited notify that is UN. It transport DTMF digits using SIP notify message. And these are also an out of band. So the message body, the message body in the notify message is like a, a 10 character digits and it contains 10 character encoded digit volume and duration which describes the DTMF event. Then we have next part that is H245 signal, H245 alphanumeric. So both are these out of band signaling. So it utilizes the signaling channel and hence provides an out of band way to send DTMF digits. Then we have this Cisco proprietary RTP that is also an in-band but not supported by CUCM but only supported by Cisco IOS gateways. Then we have this SCCP. So this is used by a call manager for controlling various SCCP based devices which is registered to it. And this SCCP defines out of band message that transports DTMF digits between your CUCM and the control device. Then we have this thing that is DTMF relay between endpoints in the same unified CUCM cluster. So we have calls between SIP endpoints, non-SIP endpoint. So calls between two non-SIP endpoints do not require MTPs. So you don't need MTPs if you have non-SIP endpoints. So Calls between two SIP endpoints, I can say. All Cisco SIP endpoints will support NTE. NTE, this is, uh, this NTE, like it supports an 
in band signaling so dtmf will send directly between the endpoints and no conversion is required and if no conversion is required you don't need mtp okay and if you have uh, like one is SIP endpoint, another is non-SIP endpoint, it might require MTP because Unified CM has ability to allocate MTPs on a call by call basis. It's not like on every call, it will require an MTP. It depends on your configuration, like based on the capabilities as well on the endpoints also. So let's discuss other things in this. Like the next is uh, we discussed about these things, the repackagization of stream, DTMF conversion. Now we'll discuss about the calls over SIP trunk or the services. So we have calls over SIP trunk. This is the main important thing I can say as of now. So calls over SIP trunk. This SIP trunk configuration is used to set up communication between SIP user agent, that is your cluster, CUCM cluster or a SIP gateway. It negotiates media exchange via SDP, that is session description protocol. And but this SDP contains, this SDP contains your media things, IP addresses, like all the codecs thing, numeric profiles, all the codecs and the conditional things as well in this SDP. And by default, your CSIP uh, trunks send the invite without an initial offer. So if initial offer is not going, that means it's a delayed offer. So if you have no idea about the uh, initial offer, like initial offer means that is an early offer. And if the, we are not sending the initial offer, that means it's a delayed offer. So early offer means uh, the phone A is sending it's SDP messages in the first invite itself. That is your early offer. So if it is not sending this SDP invites in the first invite and your phone B is sending the SDP messages in the 200 OK, that means it's a delayed offer. So if you have no idea about these things, early offer, delay offer, or the SIP things, then you can go and check out my video on the SIP session initiation protocol. I have created a detailed video on the session initiation protocol that contains early offer, delay offer, all SIP messages, SIP methods, and the scenarios between like two parties, three parties, four parties. If your gateway is there, what will be the scenario? So everything I already discussed in my SIP lecture. So this unified CM has three configurable options to enable a SIP trunk to send the offer in the invite that is early offer. So we can enable our SIP trunk to send an early offer invite and how we can uh, send, how we can like configure this. So we have three options like MTP required. We have an option we can just tick mark and we can just give the access MTP media termination point required. Next we have this thing that is early offer support for voice and video calls mandatory so what it means early offer support for voice and video calls mandatory it means insert mtp if needed then we have early offer support for voice and video calls best effort no mtp inserted so best effort means if it requires it will insert the mtp if it doesn't require it will not insert that mtp in this case mandatory insert mtp if there is a need for mtp then it will surely add it Okay, let's discuss about these in detail. So media termination point required. That means if you are enabling this option on your SIP trunk, it assigns an MTP for every outbound call. So if you are making a call from your phone A to phone B, it will surely assigns the MTP, whether it is required or not. If you are enabling this option, it will automatically assign MTP for every outbound call. Then we have next part that is early offer support for voice and video calls mandatory. So you insert MTP if needed. What it means insert MTP only if calling device fails to create outbound early offer. If you are making an outbound call but it fails to send an early offer on that, then it will insert MTP. So what it's saying unified CM 
doesn't need to insert an MTP to create an outbound early offer call over a SIP trunk if unified CM receives inbound call by any of this following means. Okay, so unified CM will not uh, need to insert this MTP uh, for this reasons, if unified CM receives inbound call by any of the following means, like if it is receiving the call on a SIP trunk, which is using early offer, on an ST23 trunk that is using a fast start, on an MGCP trunk or a from a SIP based IP phone registered to unified CUC. So let's discuss uh, in detail about this uh, mandatory thing. So when when your when your Cisco unified call manager will receive any any outbound in uh, sorry inbound call on ht 23 slow start so here we discuss about the fast start and early offer if is getting then it there is no need to insert an empty but now if there is an inbound call uh, which is on ht 23 slow start or a delayed offer not an early offer not the fast start it's an uh, slow start ht 23 slow start or a sip delayed offer on trunk so media capabilities of calling device are not available when call is initiated. So in this case, unified CM must insert an MTP. So if you are getting an inbound call on early offer and fast start, what it is written, unified CM doesn't need to insert an MTP. But if it is coming on delayed offer or ST23 slow start, then your unified CM must insert an MTP and use the IP address and the port number to show the all audio codecs in the SDP offer of the initial invite sent over the outbound ship trunk. So if, if your codec is mismatched, unified, unified CM can like uh, either insert a transcoder to add the mismatch or send a re-invite or the update message to trigger the media negotiation as well. And when you configure this, when you configure this uh, early offer, insert MTP if needed this, like if you are checking this point on SIP profile, the calls which are from the uh, older SCCP based phones or a SIP delayed offer trunks or ST23 slow start trunks, Unified CM will allocate an MTP if an MTP or transcoder is not already allocated for that particular call for any, any, any number of reasons. So if uh, there is one another thing, like if your MTP resource is not available, then your call will proceed as a delayed offer call. Okay, let's discuss about the next thing that is early offer support for voice and video calls, best effort, that is no MTP inserted. So your SIP trunk will never use MTPs to create an early offer if this option is enabled. So if you check this option in your SIP trunk, then it will never use MTP to create early offer. So best effort early offer SIP trunks send outbound calls as early offer in these situations only. So what are those situations? An inbound call to call manager or SME is received over a SIP trunk using early offer using fast start, inbound call to unified CM received over an MGCP trunk, call is initiated from SIP IP phone, SIP based IP phone, which is registered as a SIP phone on your call manager. And if a call is initiated from newer model SCCP based IP phone registered to unified CM. So you can see the difference in earlier, we have older model SCCP based phones. And in that case, we need, we need to insert the MTP. Now, Best effort early offer SIP trunks will send outbound call as early offer only in these situations. When you have early offer, fast start, MGCP trunk, a received inbound call received over an MGCP trunk, and if call is initiated from SIP based IP phone or a newer model SCCP based phones. And best effort early offer trunks will send outbound calls as delayed offer in these situations, like whether uh, if it's a delayed offer, SC23 slow start or older model SCCP based, it will send a delayed offer. So it depends on all these things, whether it will send an early offer or it will send an delayed offer. So in this case, we can utilize our resource accordingly. Like there is no need to insert MTP on every call. In general, normally we can say, uh, Cisco will recommend 
this option that is early offers support for voice and video calls best effort no mtp insert because it purely depends whether you need it or not if you don't need it it will just send a call normal as a delayed offer if you need it it will just change it to the early offer then we have this uh, h323 supplementary services in this we can say uh, mtps can be used to extend services to h323 endpoints and if needed an mtp is allocated and connected into a call on behalf of h323 endpoint and if an mtp is required on an h323 call and but this is not available then call will proceed but will not be able to invoke supplementary services and then we have this h323 outbound fast connect so what is this fast connect for inbound fast start no mtp is required but outbound calls on h323 do require an mtp when fast start is enabled so when your fast start is enabled you need a an mtp i can say that outbound calls on that particular h323 trunk requires an mtp okay then we have this thing that is dtmf conversion so these are the following scenarios uh, when two endpoints on different clusters are connected with an h323 trunk so when both endpoints are stip then we can use nte so no mtp is required for dtmf but if we have like one endpoint is sip and that is supporting kpml and nte kpml that is out of band nte is in in band so if that endpoint is sip and it is supporting both but your other endpoint is not sip then dtmf is sent as a kpml from the sip endpoint to unified cm like if it is supporting out of band and in band but the other endpoint is not sip then dtmf will send via this kpml and this h245 is used on the trunk and there is no need for that mtp for the dtmf and if now the next is if your one endpoint is sip and supports only nte in this case it was it was supporting kpml and nte and in this case it is just supporting just an example it is supporting only nte other endpoint is not sip then h245 is used on trunk and available mtp is allocated for the call in this case mtp is required but in this case mtp is not required the mtp will be allocated on unified cm cluster where the sip endpoint is located then we have this thing that is dtmf relay on sip gateways and cube and dtmf relay on h323 gateway and cube so on cisco on cisco sip gateway like this cisco sip gateway it is supporting kpml and te or unsalted notifications as dtmf mechanism and we can configure both sip kpml and rtp and te as a dtmf relay methods that is under dial peer so if once we are creating the dial peers we can uh configure this both sip kpml and rtp and ts dtmf methods under those particular dial ps so on your on your cisco sip gateway you you are configuring this under the dial peer so with this like if you are configuring both your gateway will negotiate both nte and the kpml with unified cm but if you are if the if the ntp is not supported by unified cucm endpoint then only kpml will be used for dp and dtmf exchange but if both are negotiated successfully gateway will rely on nte this one gateway will rely on nte only if both are negotiated successfully gateway will rely on this nte to receive the digits and at that point of time it will not subscribe to kpml it will only be there like for only for the nte and your gateway also has ability uh, to use this un method that is this one unsolicited notify method as well it what what this unsolicited uh, notify method will do it will just send the sip notify messages okay and if in in case if your sip kpml is not available it will use the un un method like unsolicited notify as well and we can configure the sip notify as dtmf relay method but there is one thing this is only a cisco proprietary okay then we have this thing that is dtmf relay on h323 gateways and cube 
So your S323 gateway supports DTMF relay via this S2 for alpha numeric signal NT and audio in the media stream. This is nothing like not much. Then we have this thing uh, first, uh, like, like let's discuss about first that uh, DTMF conversion. I forgot to like add it here. Just a normal, just an example of that uh, uh, DTMF conversion. So just say if, uh, if you, if you have an IP phone that is 7970 and it is using SIP to communicate with another IP phone, but that is using SCCP like this one. This is your first phone. This is your second phone. And this your first phone is using, is like configured as an SCC or SIP. And this second is configured as an SCCP phone. So it will uh, like when it's connected via like we can say it can connect via uh, SIP trunk or it can connect via and like an uh, S323 as well. So if it is connected via SIP trunk, then it will use the NTE method. But if it is connected via an H323, then it will use the out of band method like out of band it can use the KPM like this is your H323 and this is your SIP, like if it is connected via the SIP trunk. So when a call is inbound from one S323 trunk and it is routed to another S323 trunk, like both are S323 trunks, like if there is an inbound call and it is again going to the uh, S323 trunk again, then your NTE will be used for DTMF when your both endpoints are SIP, okay? And H245 is used when either either of the endpoint is not using SIP. And your MTP will be allocated if one side is a SIP endpoint that is supporting only NTE and other side is non-SIP. Let's discuss about the uh, commands which we can use for the MTP on the gateways. And I will show you the screenshots for the CUCM as well, like how we can uh, add the MTP in our CUCM. So as you can see, we need to just put this command first that is on the gateway, that is DSP farm profile for MTP. So this is just a random numeric number that is a profile number. And this MTP, this shows in, this shows uh, the media resource which you are going to add it in your kit where, like either it could be an MTP or transcoder or conference and that depends on you. So most of the time we are only configuring the transcoder and the uh, uh, conference bridges MTP that depends whether you wanted to use it or not. So as you just put this command DSP farm profile MTP then it will just give it to you this one config DSP farm profile codec pass through mode. And then these are the codecs which is supported by this hardware MTP. This is not in software, this is in hardware MTP. So as you can see, uh, the codec G722-64, G711 MULO, G711 ALO, G729 AR8 and G729 BR8. So these are the codecs it will support. So maximum sessions to here, it is written maximum sessions to means this, it shows like, uh, two simultaneous MTP sessions. Like if this MTP is invoked on two, two calls, then it will not invoke this MTP on the third call. As, so once uh, this first call or a second call over, then only that MTP will free and then it will allocate it. And then it is saying associate application SCCP. And we have, we just put the no shot on this particular port. After that, what you need to do, you need to associate the profile, this profile which you created, this DSP from profile number four, with the into the SCCM group which you just created. So we create this one group first, SCCP, CCM group one, associate call manager one and priority one, and associate which profile? This profile, profile four. And what you need to do, register as a hardware MTP. So now you register this profile as a hardware MTP and now you need to add this hardware MTP in your CUC like this. As soon as you uh, go to the device or you can say go to the media resources and you go to the uh, media termination point, when once you click on the media resources, it will not give you any uh, uh, related with the transcoder actually. So as of now, we are adding this uh, hardware MTP. So here you will just choose 
this media termination point type here you can see this type should be cisco enhanced ios enhanced software media termination point so if you are using transcoder for the configuration on CUSM, then you will use cisco ios enhanced mtp it will not give any option of transcoder in your CUSM. so as we have finished with two things that is enunciator first and then we are completed with this media resource that is mtp so in our next lecture we will discuss about the transcoder we will discuss about the conference bridge and then we will discuss about the music on hold as well i hope you guys like my video and if you really like it please like share and subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will receive notifications of all my upcoming videos thank you